I would actually say that I'm an advocate for first and foremost before I'm even like a five person. Um, you know, my my story starts way back in 92 as a first year teacher when a sales agent came into my classroom and I got an email yesterday and the same thing happened. But now it's happening virtually through um, phishing emails. But we typically hear from teachers who got signed up because of the sales agent coming to the classroom, coming to the staff lounge. And so that's my story. Everyone, we're going to pick this conversation up on the other side. Dan Otter from 403B Wise is here on the show. This is a highly requested guest. And actually, we spoke with Nancy Bockety back in episode 220. She started a website called Fix My 403B. She was inspired to do this because one, what we're about to talk about on this episode, but two, because of Dan's work specifically. Long before any of us realized how bad this was, he was out there letting people know Teachers who are already putting so much in are just frankly, for lack of a better word, getting taken advantage of when it comes to their investment options. And unless we, unless there's a public outcry, unless teachers can find each other and connect and say, we won't take it anymore, insert the rest of the lyrics here, then it's not going to change. And so Dan, thankfully, as you know, the internet and technology has brought, uh, has made things easier, much in the way the five movement has become a rallying cry for people wanting to do better with the personal finances. Dan and the team at 403B Wise and people like Nancy Bockety, who are taking up that charge as well, are really being a force for change. Welcome to the Ultimate Crowdsource Personal Finance Show. This is Choose FI. Thanks so much, guys. I really appreciate you having me on. So way back in 1992, I was a first year elementary school teacher in Southern California. It was probably my third month on the job. The kids had left for the day. I'm at my desk frantically trying to get ready for the next day as all first year teachers are. And suddenly a woman appears at my door and she pokes her head in and she says, do you care about your financial future? That's a jarring question anytime, but especially when you are a stressed out first year teacher. And I think there's only one answer, right? Yes, I care about my financial future. So she took that as an invitation to come into the room And she started talking about this investment she had for me, how she took care of the third grade teacher next door, the sixth grade teacher down the hall, and that she would take care of me. Guys, I had no idea what she was talking about. I had some vague notion that I had a pension and if I worked 30 years, I'd get a percentage of my salary. That was it. She was using a term called TSA. I had no idea what this was. So I politely listened and I said, look, if I'm interested, I'll get in touch. I do not like the hard sale. I did not like that she came into my classroom. So I did not get back in touch. But over the next several years, I started self-educating myself. And back in 1992, there was no Choose FI. There was no internet like there is today. There were no podcasts. I used to listen to radio programs on money, but I self-educated myself and I learned about John Bogle. I learned about Vanguard. I learned about low cost. I had a friend at the time who worked for Merrill Lynch, and I told him about this interaction with the sales agent. He said, oh, she is trying to sell you high cost annuity products inside something called a 403B. It's like a 401k. It's a supplement to your teacher pension. These these are terrible products. And so as I began to look into into it more, I realized most of my colleagues had been signed had been signed up for these terrible products. So I went to my school district. You're not going to believe this. Guys, we had 100 vendor choices. I kid you not. All of them, insurance companies, most of them named after presidents we admire, right? You know, Lincoln, Washington, um, just, but great presidents, terrible investing products. (laughs) (laughs) Somehow at the bottom of the list, Vanguard was available. And I had learned by then, that's what you want to do. So I signed up with Vanguard and I'd be in my staff lounge. I have to admit, I felt a little bit smug because I was investing with a really good company. And I would hear my colleagues talk about their guy, their girl, they're referring to their sales agent. So I started asking questions. Um, You know, do you know what you're paying in fees? And I'll never forget one said, uh, one woman said, oh, there's no costs. And I'm like, look, there are costs. Vanguard charges fees. And she said, well, you know, what if I brought my statement in and I had you take a look at it? And I'd never done anything like this before. So she brought it in and I was able to show her where the fees and we 
generally figured out she was paying about two and a half, three percent in fees. And she said, wow, this is so great. You should put on workshops and help other teachers. So, you know, I thought about it. And then in 2000, I bought the domain name 403bwise.com. And a, a friend and I, former teacher, we worked on the website for about three months. And then in March 2000, we launched it. We had no idea what we were doing. And, you know, a lot of crickets at first. And then slowly but surely, people started finding us. And the whole mission then was education and advocacy. We wanted to be a place where teachers and school employees could come and learn about the 403B in a non-sales environment. And then we advocate for low-cost choices like Vanguard. So that's how it all started. That was 20 years ago. I must not be good at my job because it's still a problem, guys. Uh Dan, that is that is quite a story. I mean, you wrapped up probably half the issues in the financial services industry in a in a seven minute story, right? <laughs> First off, <laughs> the paradox of choice, right? Yes, a hundred different choices. How can teachers possibly wade through that? Yeah, it, it's so true, and that's what the uh, sales um, industry pushes. Don't take away teacher choice. Give them all the choice <laughs> in the world. So you've really honed in on one of the key problems. But as you two know, it's overwhelming. So what do teachers do? Teachers have so much to do, right? They're busy, they're stressed, it's a hard job. You know, I did it for over a decade. It's one of the toughest jobs. You're physically exhausted. You come into the staff lounge and there's a person in a suit, they have free lunch for you, they're talking about your financial future, teaching credential programs do not teach teachers about this. And that's something I would like to see changed you know, we would put on free virtual events for any teacher education program out there. You know, we don't want teachers walking into that staff lounge without the knowledge. But again, you're a harried teacher. You come in, there's the food. They sign you up. You know, I can't blame them for doing that. And that's when teachers come to us. They usually have been sold these products. They don't understand them. They might listen to you guys and hear, oh, fees, costs, that's when teachers come to us after they've been hooked into these really expensive products. Yeah, it's so interesting. So many, actually half, essentially half of my extended family is uh, teachers or administrators. Uh -huh. So it, I'm thinking about, about my mother-in-law saying, I mean, she still refers to any type of retirement accounts as my annuity. Yep. Right. Because yeah. that's how it was sold to her. Right. And I mean, she's a lifelong chemistry teacher and this is just what she knew. And the, the way you're describing that social proof, right. It's like, oh, all I'm going to take care of all the third grade. Right. It reminds me of a, a pest control company that comes yeah. to our neighborhood. I'm like, <laughs> hey, Maureen down the block is using us and Richard across the street. Like they use it. And, and to your point, like you can't blame them. Right. Like life yep. is about incentives and their incentive, their job is to get sales. But it's changing. It's changing the fabric of this. And that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, I really think, you know, after 20 years, we're starting to see a lot of positive change. You know, I, I always ran the website on the side while I was teaching elementary school, middle school. Then I went and got my doctorate in education and I became a professor. And what's interesting is I've worked in different environments where 403Bs are available. So I was in the public school environment and they were largely terrible. I worked at a private school for one year and we had a really good 403B. It was one vendor. It was Tia Craft. It was fantastic. And that's something I want to point out. Not all 403Bs are created equal. The problems are at the K-12 level. Private schools generally have one vendor. Having taught at universities, we often had more than one vendor, but it was always like fidelity. Craft, Vanguard. It was good choices. And Nancy touched on this when she was interviewed. It has to do with uh, federal oversight. The K-12 403B, even though it predates the 401k by 20 years, falls outside of ERISA regulation. So the employer does not have the same kind of fiduciary duty. So is the employer in many cases, are they are they earning income off of these different, these dozens of vendors? No, I wish they were actually, because then they might pay more attention. And again, I, you know, I try to um, be open-minded about all of the um, demands of a school district, right? And they know that most teachers 
still have pension. So they've got a good core retirement plan in place. I fully understand that this is a supplement. But still, when you have a vendor list of like 10 bad companies and a teacher or a school employee, you know, we're also talking custodians, bus drivers, all the great people that work at schools. You know, if you're making this list available, it's tacit endorsement. And so these teachers think, oh, you know, my health care is provided by, by my school district. They vet those health care providers. So, of course, these are probably in my interest and they're not. And I think school districts should really begin to take more of a fiduciary control of these plans because this is a school benefit, right? This could help it attract and retain um, employees. Plus, the school benefits official, why doesn't he or she want Vanguard or T. Rowe Price or low-cost companies like that? Right, for their own, for their exactly. own 403Bs, right? Just yeah. pure self-interest, if nothing else. Exactly. <laughs> and like you said, tacit endorsement. That's such a critical psychological factor here that just by virtue of these ending up on this list, you kind of assume that somebody's looking out for you. That's just the way our, our brains work, right? So that's a, that's a really important thing. And one other thing I wanted to touch on real quick, when you said, quote, there are no fees, right? Yeah. It's, it's yeah. amazing how insidious these things are, right? And yes. so many people assume just because you're not paying out of pocket, that you're not handing over money to this salesperson, that there are no fees. but but they're there as you showed two to 3%. I mean, that's, that is a net worth killer just right there. And like, how, how do you, again, it's education and advocacy. How, how do you educate people on how to even look at for that elementary school teacher? How do you look at your four or three B statement and figure out, Hey, what the heck am I even looking for? Yeah. And they make the, the fees often hard to find. So I'm going to tell a quick story about California. California actually has legislation that prevents school districts from putting their plans out to bid. We always use the example of like Apple Computer. If you work at Apple Computer in California, you have one vendor, it's Fidelity. There are no salespeople trolling the, the offices of Apple, right? They put their plan out to bid. However, if you are a teacher in California or you're a school district, you are prevented by insurance code from the 1970s from pu putting your plan out to bid. Now, I mentioned Corona Norco, my first job, Corona Norco Unified School District. We had 100 vendors. I now live in a city called Redlands, California. And if you are a teacher in this district, you have 40 vendors. So it's gotten a little bit better. So, you know, of course, teachers are going to default to the person, you know, the sales agent in the staff lounge. Well, on two occasions, the state of California tried to get legislation passed to change this and permit requests for proposals for competitive bidding. Well, wouldn't you know it, the industry rose up and fought us tooth and nail. They bought the domain name 403bwise.org, which we now own, and that's what our domain name is now. And uh, the 403bwise, I think it was .edu. So the exact opposite, um, they ran the exact opposite message of 403bwise. Anyway, what came out of this fight was a fantastic website where teachers from all over the country can get fee information. And that's 403bcompare.com. So basically, it's I think it's about 60 vendors that offer product in California. If you're in the state of Ohio and you have an AXA or equitable 403b investment, you could go to 403b compare and you could begin to untangle the fees. And what I would tell people, you have to look in two places. There are the costs like mortality and expense, which are about 1.25%. Then you have to look at the underlying investment, the mutual funds that are part of this variable annuity product. Then you get to 3%, two and a half to 3%. Plus guys, there's often surrender charges lasting five to 10 years. So you find out you're in a bad product, you wanna get out of it, you have to you have to trade like seven percent of your balance often to get out of it. So it's insidious across the board. I think our audience is uniquely positioned right now to appreciate how expensive the fees that you just mentioned are. But let's assume that for whatever reason, because maybe this episode is very shareable, or because they saw it on YouTube for some reason down the future, whatever, someone is hearing, well, yeah, two to three percent. That's not bad. I mean, I still have, you know, on every hundred dollars, I still have 97, 98 bucks. I, you know, if someone's doing help, helping me with it, that's fine. 
could you maybe, could we, I'm sure you have a million. I'll let you suggest the case study you want to run, but I'm just thinking, let's talk about this elementary school teacher. They're a couple of years in, they're making $50,000 a year. Maybe is that, a, I don't know what the average, but that seems reasonable. And sure, let's use that number. Okay. We'll use $50,000 a year. They're going to work in the school system for 25 years, 30 years. What's an average 25 to 30 years? Pick one. You, you tell me. Yeah, I would say 30. If you want to really take advantage of your pension, I would say you want to shoot for about a 30 year career. All right. So we got a 30 year career and they are trying to do it right. Like they, they, they know they have their pension, but they want to be, they, the person asked them, you know, do you want to do well financially in this role? Then, you know, you, so the, yes, yeah, yes. So, so let's run the two case studies. The one person, you know, stumbled into 403B wise and they got a great reasonable vendor option based on compare and contrast information. The other person used the sales agent that popped in and offered them a free lunch. How expensive was that lunch? Yeah, it's, uh, in some, in a lot of cases, over two hundred thousand dollars. That's a hell of a lot of money to pay for sandwiches. In fact, on our website, on our homepage, we have something called a quick start guide, and there's one link to fee impact. And I'm going to read it to you guys real fast. Total value of investment after 35 years. So we're using a little bit of a longer time period, assuming two hundred and fifty dollars contribute a month with an average return of 6%. So we're talking a modest monthly contribution and a modest return of 6%. Two different teachers. The teacher that signs up with the sales agent in the lunchroom, they are gonna be paying 3% in fees. After 35 years, they will have accumulated $185,391. That's a nice amount, right? But imagine the do-it-yourselfer who had access to Vanguard, or there's another great company called Aspire Financial Services, which is a window and gives you access to Vanguard, T. Rowe Price, Fidelity, those kind of low cost companies. This person would have accumulated almost twice as much, $343,000. You guys are so good at math. You start doubling it to $500 a month and then the, the uh, fee penalty doubles. So it's an enormous amount. Little bits, as you know, add up to a lot of money over time. Yeah, it certainly does. Compounded over decades. That's that's remarkable. I, I'm curious. So we talk about traditional Vanguard funds where the where the actual expense ratios are tiny, you know, 0 0.04, 0 0.05. What would a good 403B plan look like? Is it similar or are there then built in some built in costs that even in the best plans they could expect? Sure. So here's the good news, guys. I actually um, visited the Vanguard campus. Uh, I was a guest of their 403B unit, and this was last November. They are very focused on this market now. You know, I, could, I would say that might not have been the case five, 10 years ago. So this is great news for the K-12 world. Vanguard is extremely interested in this um, market and are actively getting on vendor lists. So I would say anything less, you know, we prefer, you know, 0 0.50, 50 basis points in less, maybe up to 1%, maybe. But I think at that point, you want to start looking at a Roth IRA. Again, we'd want teachers to do both, right? To have a Vanguard low cost 403B and also do a, you know, Vanguard or Fidelity or low cost company Roth IRA. So I would say anything from 50 basis points and lower would be considered a good 403B. And here's are the companies I think people, like if these companies are on your list, then you're in good shape. Aspire Financial Services, Calster's Pension 2 in California. If you are a teacher in California, every single vendor list I've looked at has Calster's Pension 2. Calster's is the state pension agency but they identified the problems in the 403B, so they created their own 403B. It's available to every teacher. But again, guys, in my school district in Redlands, the majority of the money is not going to CalSTRS. It's going to these you know, agent-sold plans. Fidelity Investments, I've mentioned it a couple times, but I wanna say a warning here. It's not American Fidelity Assurance. They are a high cost company available lot of, on a lot of vendor lists. And I think teachers get confused. They heard Fidelity, so they go with them. A company called ICMA RC, longtime players in the 457B market. And again, we can talk about that. We think in many ways the 457 is actually a better plan than the 403B, especially for fire folks. 
TIA Cref, T. Rowe Price, and Vanguard. If you have one of these companies available, chances are you have a good plan. Yeah, I'm just thinking about this in terms of like, let's say that, let's pretend, maybe we're naive, but let's pretend we are actually at this inflection point, this hockey stick trajectory where due to how available this information is now and the public outcry combined, maybe even sped along by a global health crisis, a pandemic that's changing everything we were taking for granted anyways, maybe we're, this is the first day of real change, you know, or so, and you know, an overnight success, 20 years in the making that, that you've been <laughs> leaning into, but let's say it was actually the case. Like what would, what is separating us from that end game? Like, is it every teacher in the country is aware of this every, t or is it, or is it administrators are now proactively having consults or they're taking this on or, you know, like help me in your perfect utopia. What is a viable path forward if it's working the way, you know, if it's working? Sure. I'm going to answer this two ways. First of all, I'm going to say there are powerful forces marshaled against change. And it's led by something called the Tax uh, Sheltered Annuities Association, the National Tax Sheltered Annuity Association, NTSA. They are a lobbying group whose whole mission is to maintain the multi-vendor 403B environment. In a perfect world, every school district would do what Montgomery County Public Schools in Maryland did. They are one of the few school districts that actually put their 403B plan out to bid. They went from 15 vendors about 15 years ago to five about 10 years ago to one vendor two or three years ago. It's just fidelity. And what they're finding is they're getting increased contribution, increased participation, because now the confusion is gone. Now, Fidelity, as the winner of the competitive bid, can put on education sessions at the various schools for the school district. They've got the business. Now, what they want to do is get more enrollment. So we have to realize there are entrenched financial interests that do, no, do not want change. However, to your point, there is so much education out there. I think starting point should be at a minimum, every school district should have either Aspire or Vanguard. Just give teachers one low cost option. That's all they're asking for right now. Then I would encourage them to go the route of Montgomery County Public Schools, put your plan out to bid and go to one vendor. So I think this is a trajectory, okay? And it almost has to be ground up. It almost has to be led by the teachers. And that's why a big part of what we do, we have three main sections on our site, education. So all the nuts and bolts, how the plans work. The second is advocacy. And we are filled with tools. We have PowerPoints. We have long PowerPoints that can be adapted. We have three slide PowerPoints. They're actual Google slides that tell the story. We have... Um, advocates from around the country that we're forming this group of, we have their presentations, we have links to stories. So I think we have to come at this from lots of different angles. It's employee education, but it's also employer education. I, I think it was just me and I mispronounced um, the NTSA. Should I say that again? What were you saying? Um, I don't even know when you sure. said it. I think oh, I said just, National yeah. Tax Sheltered Association. Oh, sure. It's the National Tax We have tax forces deferred. entrenched against us specifically, whatever. Just give me yeah, that just one. Just say sentence. that sentence again and we'll. we'll sure. Yeah, we have well-funded entrenched um, interest lobbying against us, specifically the National Tax Deferred Savings Association. This is a very well-funded lobby that has every interest in maintaining the high cost multi-vendor 403B environment. All right, Dan, so education and advocacy. I, I, I'm, I'm trying to understand like the intersection of this. So just bear with me with like a couple of just like quick questions. And, and I don't know if you have this info, you know, off the top of your head, but so Vanguard and Aspire, you said multiple times, do you have any sense roughly of what percentage nationwide, what percentage of 403B plans have access to one or both of those? I would say probably less than 5%, but we just created this new tool. Um, it's available from our homepage. It's called Find a Good Vendor. 
in working with Aspire and Vanguard, we now have direct links to each of these companies where you can type in your school district and find out if it is available. But I'm here to tell you, both these companies want to get on a lot more vendor lists. I don't, I'm afraid to almost use the word exponential growth, but we feel these companies really beginning to make significant progress in getting into the K-12 403B market. Wow. 5%. Okay. That almost renders my next question moot, frankly, <laughs> because it sounds like advocacy is, is the biggest aspect. I was, I was going to ask you of yeah. the percentage that, that have them, do you have any sense of how many teachers sign up? Like what percent of teachers sign up? But again, it's, it's almost moot if the whole pie is only 5%, right? Yeah. yeah and again, this is anecdotal guess. And sure, the problem sure. with the market is it's so fractured, right? You have so many different vendor lists. You have gatekeepers through something called third-party administrators. So I mentioned that the 403B was created in 1958. It wasn't till 2008 that they updated some of the regulations. And as a result, a little bit more fiduciary duties were required of school districts. Again, school districts have so many different um, regular job duties, just being a school a school district that they decided to outsource a lot of the compliance to third party administrators. And many of them would say, oh, we'll do this for free, right? People love free. Well, they would then bring in vendors that would yield um, revenue for these third party administrators. So I mentioned about the entrenched financial industry. Third party administrators also have some turf protection going on as well. But if you do want to make change, I feel like it's it's not even just one person at a school district. Like you could say school benefit official. It's often school board. Many school board members have relationships with some of these financial companies, unions. I am not anti-union, but our big national union, the NEA, has a terrible endorsement deal with a financial company called Security ben Benefit. And here's what's so nefarious about it. The investment was called um, the NEA Value Builder. Picture yourself as a new teacher. You've heard about your union. You might have heard, oh, I should invest in a 403B. And you see on your list the NEA Value Builder. Oh, I'm going to go with that. Guys, they have loads of 5%, oh. okay, on some of these investments. They're awful. They were actually sued about 10 years ago. And they were a, they won, I think, in large part because they weren't um, governed by ERISA. They actually came out with a fantastic product called NEA Direct Invest. We call it lawsuit protection, uh, the, the lawsuit protection product. They don't advertise it. They don't promote it. We, through our 403B Wise Facebook group, podcast, and our various channels, we are the ones who have been getting the word out about this because we really believe they don't want to put uh, teachers into that because they don't make the same kind of money as they do in their other more expensive products. Wow. Goodness. You talk about a, a tacit endorsement before. I mean, geez, if that's your your national union, yeah, and that's on the list, that's that's crazy. So, I mean, we're talking about all these forces arrayed against you, right? And, and big money, unfortunately, it talks, right? But yeah. you mentioned this one shining star, and maybe there are more, but but you certainly mentioned this one in specifics. It's Montgomery County, right? You know, I could ask you a lot of precise questions, but but what was so special about them? What is so special about them that have enabled them to go from that whatever fifteen to five to one? Like, how how does that happen? Yeah, they recognized that this was a benefit, and they recognized it was a problem. I actually taught in that district for one year. It's the district outside of Washington D.C. And it was really funny. I um, was was working there. I think it was 2004. They had just hired a gentleman named John Keevan, whose wife worked at T. Rowe Price, and I believe he had been at Vanguard. So he was aware of the 401k. He came to the school district to um, run their supplemental pension plan, but they also wanted him to oversee the 403b. He knew nothing about it. He actually reached out to me and said, "I cannot believe." The guy that runs 403BYs works in this school district. So he came to my classroom and we had a discussion and he approached it in such a strategic way. Guys, he brought a spreadsheet showing 
all the different school sites, and it's a big, wealthy school district, participation amounts, who was participating, not just teachers, bus drivers, um, office personnel. So he looked at it at that level. He was mystified why so much money was going into the high cost investments. He knew that was a problem. So he began the process of going from 15 to five vendors. And guys, it was a political fight because people perceived it as something being taken away. Those vendors on the losing end riled up their teachers they worked with to say, they're taking away your choice. It was the same strategy they used against um, California when California tried to change the law to permit competitive bidding by school districts. So he was only there about three or four years. The person that followed him was able to then move from five vendors to one vendor. So we always point to them as the shining example, but I got to point out a couple of things. They're outliers because they had over $1 billion of assets under management. So that is a very appealing plan for these bigger vendors. And again, this is one of the challenges. If you're a small school district and you might only have half a million dollars of assets under management, probably a Vanguard of Fidelity is not going to come in. And I could talk about another solution um, if you're in that situation. I think this is what, what's interesting, though, is the power of there is no they, there's just you, and recognizing that right now we're talking to potentially hundreds of thousands of people who, many of whom are teachers or have a spouse, a loved one, a friend, a colleague who is a teacher, and they can point them towards, you know, an episode like this to pull the blinders. I mean, the thing is, for people in the audience, we understand selfishly that while this likely we're going to be able to bob and weave and make it work because we're going to look for those options that aren't as bad. It isn't about you. Like it's like, that's great. I'm glad you're making better choices. I'm glad you selfishly for yourself, you know, have figured out how to find the one good choice. But when you don't make an outcry on this, when you don't take action, when you don't share it with a friend, a family member, you don't get an administrator on board, you don't take advantage of the fact that we all have networks. When you don't do that, they're the ones that's getting screwed over because they don't, they don't know about this. They just hear they're trying to take our choice away. We just want all of our options. Right. I mean, that, and so absolutely, all of us have this opportunity when we're hearing this to say, who is that one person that might benefit for just from hearing this conversation? They can disagree, but hopefully they disagree and then follow up with why they disagree and then find out, is this really true? I, you know, TLDR, it is, it is you, this, this is actually what they don't want you to know about, but what I'm just thinking out loud here. And that's actually what I do twice a week. So that shouldn't, that shouldn't surprise anyone. But let's just say there is another Nancy Bacchity out there, right? We heard Nancy Bacchity episode 220. She was a, like, you were able to do this in Montgomery to some variation, you and your network. Nancy was able to do this in her school district. What if we don't need a million Nancy's? What if there's a hundred? What if there's 50 yeah. people listening to this that say, I will put all of my energy into this. I will create a mini movement in my school district to make this happen. But I can't do it alone. I'm going to need support. I'm going to need tactics. Like what is the, the next step, Dan? Absolutely. Please reach out to us. We are building a network of advocates. And in fact, we were all set this last summer to fly 12 teacher advocates that we identified to San Diego and do a three-day uh, networking conference and education conference. We were going to build um, PowerPoints and strategies on how they could then go back to their school districts and advocate. Well, we know what happened with the pandemic. So we held it virtually. So we've got these 12 people that we're working with. So we want to, and they are now doing it virtually in their different school districts. We want to do another group this summer. We are going to continue to build this out. So get a hold of us, okay? Dan at 403bwise.org. Join our Facebook group, the 403 Wise Facebook group. That has probably been the biggest surprise to me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Facebook, but a year ago when we became a nonprofit, a .org, we launched a uh, 403 Wise Facebook group. We now have 1,500 members. And what's happening on almost a daily basis, teachers are posting their vendor list. I got one yesterday. I'm going to read you some of these names. Tell me, guys, if this is any or these are any companies you would invest in. AIG Valak, Ameriprise, Horace Mann, 
ING Rely Star, security benefit. That's the NEA product. Private investment, Waddle and Reed. That is what this teacher in Montana is stuck with. So he or she will post their vendor list, the network, the community, much like your community, will jump in and say, see if you have the low cost security benefit product, NEA Direct. See if you have for a 457. See if your school district will allow you to add an Aspire, add a Vanguard. You know, our, our motto is the K-12 403B is broken. Together we can fix it. I cannot do this. Nancy cannot do this. We need to do what you just suggested, build a network. And I'm now using the term, we need to build an army. I got chills. <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, Brad, you were saying your family members, so many of them are teachers. I would bet almost everyone listening, know, like, I'm sure they had great relationships with at least a couple teachers or family members or teachers. How can we not solve this? We value teachers, I hope now more than ever. We're seeing them. What other career had to 100% pivot in how they did their career in such a short time than teaching? These individuals are heroes and we need to treat them like the heroes they are. I think it's just so interesting that we're talking about 403Bs. Like, like we're, we're not here griping to you about most of your 401k plans. Maybe some of you had a bad 401k plan, but like we're just talking about 403Bs here. This is wrong. Just because you decided to serve and be a teacher and teach others, you don't get good investment options. You have to be saddled with so much choice. Oh, yay. Look at all my <laughs> options. <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> Maybe there's something in here. Maybe. If only I had someone that I could bounce it off of. Oh, oh, there's an agent down there and you get a free lunch. Maybe they'll give you good advice. It's, it's free lunch. Oh, Dan. Okay. All right. This has been awesome, man. We'll just give you the floor back. I mean, we're going to keep this episode super tight because honestly, I just want them to listen to this episode. I want them to share it with a friend or family member, and then I want them to reach out and get started. So your final thought. Sure. Um, I would say be active. I always tell people no one cares more about your money than you do. Join our Facebook group. Come to the website. Um, get wise about what your 403B vendors are. And the other thing I would mention is see if you have a 457 available. Increasingly, school districts are offering 457B plans. They work almost exactly the same as a 403B, except for they have two amazing benefits the 403B don't have, doesn't have. One would be very appealing to five people. If you have a 457 from an employer and you separate service, let's say you're 35 years old and you leave that employer, you can access 457B money tax penalty free. Normally the government's gonna hit you with 10% penalty. In this case, they do not. The second thing, there's actually two more advantages of the 457. The second is that three years from normal retirement age, let's say it's 62, you're allowed to double your contributions in your 457B. So for the last three years, it's like right now we're at 19,500. So that's almost $40,000 you could do for three years. And then if you're fortunate enough to have a good 403B, you can max that out, which is $26,000 right now. I think that's $65,000 total that you can do. The third thing is guys, the 457B requires more fiduciary oversight. So typically a school district that offers one only has one or two vendors and they're often a lot better. The final thought on the 457 is many states have excellent 457B plans available that they make available to school district, particularly in the state of New York. The New York 457 Deferred Compensation Plan is available to teachers. They have $23 billion of assets under management. So imagine the kind of pricing they can get. They have an S&P 500 index fund that charges and I kid you not, 0 0.008. It is the lowest cost investment I have ever seen. So check your 403B vendors, advocate for better ones, but also look if you have a 457. And if all else fails, start a Roth IRA. You could open one with Fidelity or Vanguard in an hour. Man. I'm not even a teacher and I have adrenaline going through my system right now. Like I want to get up and do something. I want to punch a wall. I want to be a force for change. I want to be a part of 
fixing this. And I hope you do as well. So your action step this week is very simple and it's twofold. We want you, first of all, go check out 403BY. See the incredible work that they're doing. Follow up. Take Dan up on his offer to be a part of this movement. I'm telling you, he has been working 20 years to be at the inflection point that you are at right now. So this is going to feel like it changed really fast if you say, I'm willing to be a part of this. He has laid a foundation for 20 years to get the level of exposure that we are going to see over the next 12 months. And things are going to change if you do one of two things. One, take action, go to a site, connect with him, let him know you want to join him. We're not going to let forces of special interest marshal against this. When our teachers' financial futures are at stake, we're going to join the movement. And then two, we can't do it alone. We're a big group. We're a half million strong. We need to make it 2 million. We need to make it 3 million. We need every single teacher in this country to have had the chance to hear this episode. And so I'm just asking you, find a friend or two, all your colleagues, all the teachers that you know, and make sure they listen to this episode. There's nothing else in this. There's nothing else in this. We didn't include any other elements. This episode started and it finished with the sole goal of saying this will not stand. So share it, spread it, and let's all together be a force for change. All right, my friends, the fire is spreading. We'll see you next time as we continue to go down the road less traveled. <laughs>